ever noticed that when you sit down to meditate, out of nowhere you have this incredible need to examine your toenails? It's not just me, right? Today I sit down with a certified meditation instructor to find out why that happens and what to do about it. Join me. Welcome to Kim TV, where you learn how to stop running on empty, fill your tank, and live agelessly. I don't know about you, but it seems like it's harder and harder to stop and smell the flowers. When I see a flower, instead of simply enjoying it today, I Google it, which sets me on a web wormhole and ends up in me buying a thousand silk butterflies from China and reading how Drew Barrymore washes her baby. Meditation has never been more critical to our health and well-being, but with so much going on up here, it can be difficult to make it a part of your life. For the benefits of meditation, be sure to check out this video. Continuing in my meditation deep dive today, I'm interviewing certified mindfulness facilitator and my friend, Jana Paracone. I recently attended a meditation that you did, you and your husband. He's a brilliant, uh, he was playing the Tibetan, what do they call it? They're Tibetan, called Tibetan singing, singing bowls. bowls. Singing bowl, which they did. And I was I was actually blown away at how chilled I was in mm. a matter of like minutes. Mm -hmm. um, also, you can let him know that my husband and I, when we when we got home, we bought all of his CDs. <laughs> just, just don't drive with them. I mean, oh, yeah. yeah, we yeah, we have to put a disclaimer on all of our bowl meditation, uh, our Tibetan meditation bowl CDs because you will end up in like, you know, Canada. Know. Yeah, <laughs> I put a link to those CDs in the description below. So let's get right into it. What is mindful meditation? Well, mindful meditation is bringing your attention to the present moment with an open curiosity and a willingness to be with what is. So earlier you talked about the toenails, right? Mm -hmm. I think a lot of people have a misconception of what mindful meditation is. I think they think that their mind, if they're doing it correctly, is supposed to just stop and they're supposed to be able to be in this place. You clear everything out. But in reality, that's not what happens. In reality, when we bring our focus to the breath, for instance, the mind automatically starts to wonder. It starts to think about all sorts of things. It can think about your toenails, it can think about what you're going to make for dinner or your plans for the evening. It's, that's normal. That's what the mind does. It's kind of like when you, you know, eat some of your delicious food, right? What does your stomach do? It begins to digest. It's what it does. So what we've learned through mindfulness and through all the latest science that's been doing on, been, been taking place on mindfulness meditation is that through the process of merely labeling whatever the thought is, planning, any, any kind of description that's just a, a very non-judgmental, just a noticing, uh, anxiety, um, excitement, whatever that is that's waving through our awareness, mm -hmm. once we label it and we bring it back to the present moment, the breath or whatever we've chosen to focus on, that creates the ability for the frontal cortex, first of all, of the brain to begin to function more sufficiently or efficiently. Mm -hmm. um, and the, the frontal cortex of the brain is the part of the mind that is able to um, take a little space behind a reaction, like to the toenails, mm -hmm. or, you know, or, or to, oh God, I gotta uh, make dinner tonight, whatever it is that you're thinking about. It actually allows the mind to process what we're thinking and therefore be able to make a better decision. So going to the toenails, to take, yeah. for example, so you label it. So if I'm like sitting down to meditation, and I'm thinking I'm gonna zen out and I go, mm -hmm. oh my God, I gotta look at my toenails. And my brain starts going, oh, those look bad. Oh, summer's coming up. Oh, I'm gonna wear that to this weekend. Oh, I gotta go get my nails done. Okay, so what I would do with that is I would find kind of an umbrella word for that. That could be, um, uh, uh, desire to get things done. You know, it's, that's not a word, but it's it's a phrase. Mm -hmm. um, something that can in, in, incorporate that whole feeling that you're having. Um, it can be anticipatory anxiety. Mm -hmm. Something, but it's like I said, it's just like, oh, there it is again. Because what I've noticed is that things like having to get my my nails done, having to get dinner. For me, mm -hmm. what a lot of that is, is doing things right. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I've labeled that as, that's my perfectionism. Now it doesn't mean I'm not gonna do them, but it means I frame them in a different way. And what I've noticed over time is that now when I have that, oh, I gotta do my nails, or I've gotta do, I've gotta call that person, 
I can take a step back and go, do I really need to? Sometimes I do, and sometimes I really don't. So that whole area, that whole level of has gone away. So you're not in reaction. You're, you're actually more in choice. Right. For the most part. So the most part, yes. Yeah, so I am in practice. process, but yes, for the most part. <laughs> how did you get, now, how did you get into meditation? Well, I had been meditating for many, many years, but I hadn't been doing meditation of mindfulness meditation and had kind of hit a plateau and I started to explore other things and I was talking to a friend of mine and she was telling me about all this this great science that's come out about mindfulness. Things like mindfulness meditation, when you practice it, can lower your inflammatory response. And that's what's aging us. That's what's aging us. us sick. It's yeah. making us sick. It's a precursor to things like cancer mm -hmm. and dementia. Um, at the same time, it ups our energy. I mean, they've done this through tests. It actually, are you familiar with telomeres? The telomeres, that's the the edge of, ends of the DNA that actually start to shorten. Shorten as we yep. age. As we age, right. Well, they've actually found that it's helping to keep them long and even elongate them. And this is very, very new science, but it's really promising. When you follow the breath and then your mind wanders and you learn how to just bring it back and you learn to, to like, like what I do is in the beginning is I'd feel a feeling and I'd be out in the game, you know, like, and then I'd notice I was there and you just, the instruction is just to bring yourself back non-reaction. I would almost notice my desire to react. Like I wanted to react, but that's not part of the instruction. So I would even notice that I wanted to react and I would just call that reaction. So there's first the uh, toenails, you really do then there's the reaction, observer. you become an observer. And then what happens is it's almost this, this click. It's almost like when you start getting stronger, you know, you're working out, you start getting stronger and suddenly you're running three miles when you just used to be able to run one. And you're yeah. like, wow, how'd that happen? Well, it's because you did all this stuff. So I'm, you know, like I'll be talking with my son and he'll bring up something in me that in the past I might react. And, you know, now what I can do is say, oh, reactions are rising. This all happens instantly. Reactions are rising, breathe. What do I really feel about what he's saying? What's really going on here? And it's, 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 it's quite, incredible and yet very subtle at the same time. So it takes training, to, it, it takes, it, a pr it's practice. It's practice. It's practice. So you're a mom, as you said, you're yeah. a mom, you're a wife, you're a, a gifted professional singer, which yeah, I just have to say, I've been listening, mm. amazing. And you're a certified mindfulness instructor. How do you find time in your day to do it? I mean, that's the biggest thing that I find and I, I talk to a lot of women with, like, I am so busy. Mm -hmm. I can't even stop. Mm -hmm. If I just, on mornings when I don't have a second, if I just go one breath in, that's it. And on other mornings when I have more time and I can solidify the practice, good. So first of all, I take away the whole thing like, I have to do it. I'm supposed to do this, I know this is good for me. I mean, that's, that's absolutely the antithesis. Yeah. That's the first thing. Second thing, there's some like informal meditations, mindful meditations you can do all day long. One that I love to use is based on the alliteration, stop. It's so easy. Stop, S, stop, T, take a breath. <laughs> o, observe. What am I thinking? What am I feeling? And where is it in my body? Usually when I'm feeling anxious, like I'm a little nervous right now, right? This is new, yeah, like we're just here. talking, right? A little, I feel that a little flutter in my stomach. So I notice the flutter in my stomach. I observe that P, proceed. That's it. You don't have to change anything. No. You don't have to do anything. You just become aware. No, right. Mindful. Exactly. Ah, I know. Figure. Exactly. <laughs> there is no change. The change will happen organically gotcha. if it needs to. Gotcha. Right? And I would also imagine the change is, is the reaction. Yes. Because a lot of times what we do is we do what's called a double arrow. It's like... I'm already feeling anxious for dinner that I need to get done, let's say. And then the double arrow is, gosh, I should be doing it. I shouldn't have done that, all that blah, blah, blah. That's what gets taken away. And it's amazing ah. the amount of like space and room that opens up. Gotcha. When we let go of that. So what are some of the changes that you've you know, experienced in your life since you've started practicing the mindful part of meditation? Well, many. First of all, I'm, I used to be very reactionary. 
And um, you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, and sometimes you would like, oh, I was like, I couldn't believe what I would, would do. But I had a really amazing experience for, for my profession. I'm a singer. And uh, I was getting, I was preparing to perform for kind of a, a, a high-end clientele. It was, it was, it was a much more loaded performance than many. Mm -hmm. And in the midst of just before I was about to perform, I noticed myself really feeling anxious, like really nervous, like that feeling of wanting to run was was coming on because I was, you know, I was prepared and everything, but it came. And I decided that moment, I said, I'm gonna use my mindfulness, I'm gonna use it, I'm gonna use it. I know I'm just about to sing, I'm not gonna rely on the old things, I'm gonna use this, I've been practicing it, let's see what happens. So I took that in incredible feeling that can be so powerful, and I just noticed it. I breathed it, I let it run through me, I didn't react, and what came through that process was just be yourself. Trust in yourself. Trust mm. in yourself. There's nothing to be afraid of. I stood up, I sang, and I had a kind of response I've never had. People wow. were coming up to me and going, wow, I've never heard that song that way before. And I was so moved and, and, and my experience was so different. My experience was so present. Wow, it sounds like you, you were able to really tap into a, a power that's always there. That's always that, there. That we forget because we're in reaction or, be, right. or, or we're trying to stifle. We're not supposed to feel that fear. We're not supposed exactly. to feel that. Which, oh, I got to, you know, they say, even though you know fear is not real, you, you know, cancel, cancel. And it's like, it, that, that's, your brain knows better than that. Well, here's the deal, right. <laughs> because what happens is when we get into fear and if we don't have a strong enough processor, what happens is the, the reaction goes right into the reptilian part of our brain, which is the part of our brain that's all about fear and flight. And it literally shuts down the executive functioner. So the reason you can't is because you can't. But with meditation, mindful meditation, what they're finding, like, like we had talked about a little earlier, is that the frontal cortex part of our brain actually becomes thicker, stronger, so we're actually able to bypass the, that reptilian wow. part of the brain better. A lot of women say that when they sit down to meditate, they can't stop their thoughts. And as you said earlier, you can't, you're not supposed to. What do you do when you first sit down? There's a couple of options. The foundational mindful practice is to get yourself in a comfortable position, take maybe one deep breath, mm -hmm. and then begin the process of noticing your body sitting, noticing maybe your sit bones on the chair, not regulating your breath, just noticing your breath wherever your breath is, and, and beginning to hold yourself in a very inclusive cover, okay. lovingly, mm -hmm. right? And then when you start to have your thoughts, what a, a, lot, a lot of times what'll happen is you won't even know you're thinking. So when you begin to notice that you're thinking, that's your first little excitement of mindfulness. And then you can bring yourself back to your breath. So it's really, it's really just sitting down and being open and curious to see what happens. Wow, so that makes it easy. So you don't have to stop your life and all No, the, no, no. You, you, you actually find it in your life. Oh my yeah. gosh, I'm yeah. driving on the freeway in Los Angeles, which of course can be extremely frustrating. And I'm driving, right? And I'm like, I'm, I, I'm not getting anywhere. And so I stop, take a breath, observe where I'm feeling, hmm. try to proceed, although I can't because the car won't go forward. Yeah. But, you know, <laughs> but I, in my mind, in my motions, I'm, I, there's an acceptance. Wow. Of just what it is. I can see how that could really change. Can you imagine everything? If everything. We all did that. Everything. It would change everything. How do you know if you're doing it right? There's there's no real right. There's process. The thing that you can give to yourself the best is just self love for no matter where you are. And if all you can do is say, "I wish I was meditating," that is a step closer to you know, the other, the alternative. And that's how I began practicing. I began practicing literally like 30 seconds. I am not kidding you. When I started like 20 years ago, I was like, 30 seconds is all I could do. That's amazing. And it just, it builds. But see, I love to use these processes for my life. My desire is to use it to enhance 
my truth and my authenticity of what I want to communicate and bring to the world. Because we all have our own gifts. Absolutely. Right? I know when, as women, when we're really operating in that place, I believe the entire experience of the world will change. Yeah. Because the rest of the world takes its cue off of us. Mm. And we just, I think that we're just not, I don't think we're responsible to our power yet. Yeah. I think we're sometimes afraid of it. Well, thank you so much for taking time out of your very busy life and your mindful life <laughs> to be here with me today. Well, thank you for having me, Kim. Do you have any uh, performances or uh, workshops coming up that people can find out about? Absolutely, absolutely. We're, we're, we're doing a mindful world music performance at the Fowler Museum at UCLA on June the 5th at 5.30. That's in LA. In LA, in okay. Los Angeles. Okay. And if you're interested in locating some of our music, we are, we are on Ohmstream. Dot com, okay. as well as iTunes. Every month we do a, an event called Sonic Sunday. It's the one that you came right, to. Right. And you should live stream it. I, I, we are thinking about that. Like, people <laughs> often all around the world we need to do that. need to get mindful. And I'll put the link in the description below. Oh, well, thank you. I mean, just, just even just today, just like getting the little tips. It's, I could see how it could be so much easier. Mm. It really makes more space. I know. Craving and, and there's that feeling of like, oh, yeah. that's, that's who I am. That's what I want. That's what I want to share. And I know mm -hmm. women everywhere are craving. I think there's this light that there's this light that's going on in us that we're all realizing our role and we're wanting that. Yeah. If you want more of jhana mm -hmm. or mindful meditation, I've included some links in the description below. There are so many different kinds of meditation. Mindfulness is just one of them. Coming up on Kim TV, I continue Meditation Month by reviewing two meditation apps. I hope you'll join me. Do you have a favorite mindful practice? Gardening, washing the dishes, brushing your hair a thousand times? Let me know in the comments below or tweet me at Kim Castle with a hashtag Meditation Month. If you haven't joined the Life on Full conversation, it's easy to do. Just log into YouTube with your Gmail account and let me know your thoughts in the comment section below or contact me on Facebook or you can sign up for my newsletter at kimcastle.com. Every week I share tips, resources, and answers that I discover on the anti-aging road back to vitality, energy, and feeling your best so that you can enjoy your life again. If there's something you'd like to see me explore, be sure to let me know. Thank you so much for inviting me into your life today. Be sure to share Kim TV with a woman that you love. Until next time, remember to live life on full. Hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know in the comments below and show me some Sally Field and like it. And of course, subscribe. I promise I'll make it worth your while. Great. It was excellent. Yeah, that was good. We don't need another take. The perfectionist in me can go, let me try it again. It was so good. No, I know, of course, right? Oh my God, every time I hear my song, I'm like, no, do this. Do this.